you well. Good. All right, so this morning, um, you know, thanks for coming in. We're going to just go through your mid-year um, check and see how your goals are going and how okay. things are progressing with your math students. Um, so just to go back and review, your first student learning growth goal, um, really you were focusing on Common Core, eighth grade Common Core math standards. Yep. Um, and this, I believe this is the one you were using easy CBM data, is that right, correct? Right, that's where I use the easy CBM as my assessment. Okay. Um, so can you walk me through the process of, you had your baseline data, mm -hmm. how has the year progressed in terms of using that data and, and planning so, and instruction? So I teach, the students that I teach in that class are struggling learners overall, so I, I wanted the kids who had the, the lowest score to make mm -hmm. the most growth by the end of the year. Sure. Well, they have so those I, catching up to do. Yeah. So, so I, um, I progress monitored them. Uh, so we did their formal winter check-in in, in uh, early January. And I actually <laughs> had several students meet their goal already for the end of the year. And um, wow. they were really proud of themselves, which was great. Yeah. I had a few students just blow me away with growth. They clearly, uh, they clearly learned stuff. Now the problem with this assessment is it doesn't tell me which which standards that they grew the most on. Okay. And some of the standards on the test we have not even taught yet. So obviously sure. those questions are going to be probably guessing questions for sure. them. I had four students in my class that are not showing what I gauge to be adequate growth. Okay. So, so can we touch on, the, on those students? Yeah. Can you um, talk to me a little bit about how you would intervene with those students, how you are intervening with those students? So those students are my um, always my struggling learners. On all the sure. proofs I give in my class, they're the kids who oftentimes don't meet the first time and need extra attention and intervention. Okay. The two students that went backward are chronic non-attenders. Okay. and they miss a lot of school. So the way we try to deal with that with our low kids is we have an educational assistant, uh, Michelle, who works with students during another class period to try to get them caught up if they miss things. Sure. Um, oftentimes these kids, even though they're eighth graders, they're not taking it upon themselves to check in with us if they miss something, to right. check in with anybody. And so, okay. so, so you're using you're using your easy CBM data now, but then you're also using the, the data that aligns with the standards from your proofs. Right, okay. I wanna see that my classroom is, not only am I looking at the data from easy CBM to say who needs help overall, but I need to make sure that they're mastering each standard individually too in my classroom. So that's how I track it with my proofs in my grade book. Now do you take into account when you're looking at that data, the number of times they may have reproofed or are you are you pretty much just focusing on, you know, when they get there, no. they get there. They get there whenever. So I'm curious about that too. Are you finding that students are responding well to the intervention? We've, you know, historically, eighth grade, struggling learners, these are students who, they've been struggling with math their entire educational, you know, career. Are they responding to this system and this process? Because it is new. Yeah. Um, I'm just wondering how I, that's how that's working. I think just some of system. them, I think a few, a handful of them kind of rebel against the fact that, yeah. you know, I have two math classes a day, this is terrible, I hate <laughs> math. Uh, but they kind of come around to it and with enough behavioral structure and instructional, um, I guess, leadership where we're making it engaging and fun, it doesn't feel like they're in math twice a day. Mm -hmm. And so I, I think that there's a visible shift in attitude with, with these students. I mean, we had students who were in interventions for math in the past who would just shut down. Right. You know, and I think this gives them a little bit more ownership and it looks like that. That's well, what I you're think the key too them. is that they know that their best score wins, you know. So. Right. How many of your students have yet to meet their goal for easy CBM at this point? So I actually denoted if they were on track for meeting their goal. Um, How did but you determine I, that? I kind of looked at it. I said if they were at least, so I, I took the median okay. between where their goal was, so the range of their their initial school score and where I want them to be in the spring, I split okay. it in half. If they were there, then I considered them on track. Okay. Only four kids weren't on track, Great. but I do have eight kids who've already met. Wow. So um, they, obviously I'm not going to quit teaching them, but. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, we're at the midpoint in the year. I know that when we initially sat down and talked about your goals, I mean, some of it was kind of rolling the dice. How much growth are they going to make? Mm -hmm. What do we think is realistic? As you reflect back just on, you know, where you're at at this point in the year, yeah. you know, how might you adjust a goal, say, for next year based on what you've seen this year? Uh, I think it's. 
I think it's tough to say because, and I thought about this because mm -hmm. I think, oh, this many kids have already met my goal. I should make it much more rigorous. I should mm -hmm. up the bar that much more. But I do still have those kids who haven't met the goal, sure. who are really on track in terms of their learning pace. So at this point in time, I would, I, I would like to just take the data and say, like, yay, I I'm meeting my right. goals. <laughs> and I'm also graduating kids out of particular risk categories, which I think is more important than even just the targets that I set. I sure. definitely appreciate that you're looking at you know, various sources of data, and um, it's it's clear that you're continuing to do that, and even just reflecting, you know, that's that's really the purpose of what we're doing today. So you touched on something that, if you can just elaborate a little bit for me, um, and that's presenting this data and having the students take a look at it. Yeah. So you can talk. Can you talk to me a little bit more so, about? Okay. Um, so what I do is I call them up after they take the test. I share with them first what they got in the fall. Okay. And I say, do you think you did better than that? Mm -hmm. And they say either yes or no. And then I share with them how they did this time. And I'll say some other kids, my two kids who moved back toward, backward, I said, what do you think happened? And mm -hmm. a lot of times they say, well, I guess on a lot of questions. Or I didn't know how to do it. And I said, well, don't, don't worry, because we're going to mm -hmm. learn those standards in the next few months. Make sure you're really focused so that when you take this again in the spring, you're prepared for that. Sure. So I, I, I'm not going to make them feel bad. But I think you it's know, important for them to to take ownership of it and understand it. Yeah. I mean, so often you could sit, and it's, it's great, and believe me, I love that, I mean, I said that before, I love how much data you use and you look at, but especially in eighth grade, I mean, they need to start advocating for themselves. Yeah. I mean, the only thing I can think of that for that goal is just the couple of kids who struggle so, so horrendously with sure. behavior. I really want to brainstorm with you, with our IPBS team mm -hmm. about strategies, not just school-wide strategies, like check-in, check-out, all of that kind of stuff. More like individualized. In-class instructional strategies that will keep these kids focused, you know? And sure. I do so um, I just want to work, even whether it's as a building or what on engagement strategies. Mm -hmm. And so I know there's a course coming up that I want to attend. There is. With my mentee as well. I think it'll be helpful, and I think it'll work well with those particular students. There are accountability pieces that mm -hmm. are in there. There's certain things that make them cooperative structures right. that I think More of a help framework a bit. that that I don't always have or use or I could at least learn from and try out in my classroom. Sure. It's interesting with these goals this year because there's there's so much that was unknown when we were writing them. I mean these are new assessments. Yeah. They're can you tell me, has the math the middle school math folks, have you guys gone back together and looked at and done item analysis on these? We're like, in the process just, of that. Okay. Um, so that's one of our goals by the end of the year to go back and say which one of these questions um, was leading kids in the wrong direction. Sure. Or focus common core standards and that's part of my professional practice goal to right. know those really well mm -hmm. and not test the kids on every single common core standard in the entire world because clearly we're not going to be able to go in depth on every right. standard by the time they take this you know for not just for goal purposes but for data driven purposes for the end of the year for next year's placements, etc. Right. So I brought a couple of work samples. Okay. This, these were their initial assessments. I just picked two, I honestly picked two random kids. Okay. So in the beginning of the year, he was a solid one. Which because you break it down, are higher than 12. And just picks random answers. Most of it is blank, um, very little reasoning. So move yeah. it fast forward to January, <laughs> and this student, Anna, has straight fives mastery in my class. She has 100% if you were to convert it to a percent mm -hmm. or a five in my class, wow. which means, you know, moving over to a five, students work demonstrates complete understanding can justify the solution and or can apply the concept to a practical application and or solve it in multiple ways. So she's writing paragraphs on her, her proofs that are not asking for paragraphs and she's right. explaining why she knows in multiple ways the thing works. And it's great to actually see that from her. Um, because she is a student who was struggling in sixth grade and in seventh grade, and and part of it makes me wonder if if some of the new you know the new curriculum and the new expectations for students and that new mathematical thinking component and all so, of so um, and so then my other kiddo sure. who I pulled out kind of you know I would say that in terms of his um, his ability I I put him I put him about in the middle ability effort way at the bottom mm -hmm. but he's a four average wow really a four average and that's probably after a couple of retakes. And he still got one, but so two, what? and He's one three. It. It so I have one, two students who are averaging a two. It's because of missed proofs for both those students, so in, you know excess absences. Mm -hmm. And then I have four students with a three who are approaching. Again, all of those have at least one absence. 
So These are, are the content standards that they're being assessed this on with is, their proofs, uh -huh. and they align with your initial assessment, or at least... So this power standard that all five of these fall under mm -hmm. are related to one of the power standards we used for one of the got questions it. here. Okay. So I looked specifically at that question okay. and the score they got on that, um, on that question and related it to the average for this competency. Okay. So in your initial so, goal, yeah. um, you listed quite a few strategies. What are the ones that you are using? You know, how are you using them? So, are there some you haven't used? So I would, I'll start on those that I haven't really used okay. as much yet, and that would be some of the instructional technology pieces. Okay. I have one iPad and then my own iPad, and mm -hmm. so I have used those pretty extensively. Okay. I do a lot of station rotation or gallery walks where sure. I'll have posters up that poses a question or um, maybe a statement and then asks various questions, and either the kids are responding on the paper or they're putting sticky notes where they go or they're sorting cards. Um, or they're making definite statements, yes, no, and have to back it up, and it's all there. So I don't have to be anywhere. Mm -hmm. And then two of those stations will be an iPad, like maybe showing how to do a new skill that'll be introduced tomorrow. Okay. So like a little teaser, like sit down with this worksheet, hit, watch the video as many times as you need to be able to do it. So it's mm. a little bit differentiated. So, one, so the, those are some of the things I do. I do a lot of whiteboard check-ins. We do a lot of every day when they walk in, they get a whiteboard, a whiteboard marker, or a shop ticket with like graph paper inside. Okay. Um, or they get their compass and their rulers and we're doing different constructions. Now you just touched on, on that student discourse piece really without specifically dropping those buzzwords into your <laughs> sentence. Refresh my memory because I'm not seeing it on this list, but I know that that has been a piece that you really have put some focus on this year. Student discourse? And, yeah. I think it's in one of my goals, so maybe it's in the other one under strategies. Yeah, it may not just goal. be that listed right it, here. It certainly says students like talking together. So I do a lot of peer student discourse, and sometimes I set them up with sentence frames I have to fill in. I got my answer by looking at this and that and seeing that if you divide it, it wouldn't be the same. Well, do they have similar no, I don't have to go and I try throughout the course of any class period, I try to activate every single kid individually from me. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're a teacher who does a lot of reflection and a lot of thinking back to not just the lessons, but taking into account formative assessments and mm -hmm. even these summative assessments and all of these different data pieces that you've shared today. What more, I mean, is there something that I can provide you? Like so where I need to grow for sure, and I've, I've talked to Michelle about this, and I'm like, how could I move forward with this? How could I get better at this? Is tightening up when I say, okay, you have two minutes to be done with mm -hmm. this, really holding them to that two minutes instead mm -hmm. of, well, two and a half minutes is close. Right. You know, and I'm kind of, I'm, I'm a little bit, I'm like overly flexible in those areas. Um, this year, more than ever, I see how my goals are relating to everything I'm doing in the classroom and it's looking back and looking at those strategies I am thoughtfully implementing them because I said right. I would right and if I don't do them and then my kids don't do well well I don't have a leg to stand on right well I would love to come in and do some timing yes just, just to keep track because yes. I just think it would be fun because yep. one one thought that I had was to look at um, student engagement because that's one of my goals but and then we're doing cooperative structures nope. and I may add I a meeting or two well and the other thing is you're gonna already have had the cooperative structures yep. training Judy's taken it Sienna's taken it Liz has taken it uh, so this has been an absolutely wonderful conversation I think it's it's I have felt like it's been a valuable conversation I hope you feel mm -hmm. that way too yep. um, it's really one of the things that I love about this process. It's like you were saying, even though, yes, we have to go through and there's some hoops and there's some, some logistical kind of things that takes time. Um, but, you know, I hope you found it meaningful. You, yeah. you clearly, this is right up your alley, this whole process and having these discussions. So just to kind of wrap things up at this point, next steps. So for me, um, I, I think I'm going to keep rolling with the assessment strategies I'm using in my classroom. Okay and I want to keep improving upon the strategies I'm using instructionally with the kids. So looking at um, that ratio, you know, student to teacher talk, teacher to student talk, however right. you want to list it, I'd like to be students at 80% and me at 20%. Um, and then the other thing I plan on doing is attending um, the Cooperative Structures course and I'm going to continue to assess my kids and uh, if I see that there's a particular learning target coming up or a standard coming up that they're really struggling on, um, work you know, with you and, and with Michelle and I guess just brainstorming new strategies I can try out in my class. Great. Awesome. Um, 
Well, all right. Well, thank you so much thank for you. coming in and yep. let me know if anything changes or you need anything else. I want you to be able to defend that. I want you to keep working on that one or go to another one and come back to it. Okay, what did you say here? Is this yours, Zaina, or yours, Adriana? Adriana, can you read it? I can read it any house with house one might be Okay, so don't take this, take the actual answer of the question. Okay, that can go back to you. Because you might pull that same question again. Okay.